Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you guys about conquering your dreams, even if you don't know what they are just yet. And that sounds a little bit confusing, right? It's like, how am I going to conquer something if I don't even know what it is I want to do yet? Well, a lot of people like myself don't know exactly what we want to do yet, which is perfectly fine. That's fine, accepting that it takes a while to figure out what's really going to be for you. What do you want to do? Maybe you want to do multiple things. Um, it's all about figuring it out. And I have four steps. Well, that's eight. So I have four steps to figuring out what's going to be for you and how to conquer what is for you. I'm not exactly an expert because <laughs> I haven't done this yet, <laughs> but this is going to be an experiment on my actual life to see how it's going to work out. The first thing is to figure out what you're good at. And I don't mean what your passion is or what you love to do. It's literally what you are good at. You have to find your niche, 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 whatever, however you want to call it. Somebody once told me in order for you to be able to do what you love to do, your passion, and to be able to do that like full time and not really have to report to a job that you don't really like or whatever, whatever, you have to start somewhere. And for a lot of people, it's not always that you can just jump right into what your passion is and what you love to do if you know what it is that you love to do and what your passion is because you have bills to pay. You know, there are things that you have to take care of. So first things first, you got to do what you got to do. So let's say you're good at drawing, but you don't necessarily have a passion for that. You don't really love that. You like to make music. You need to take advantage of what you're good at and use that to uh, basically elevate your platform and give you what you need to get where you need to be. So if you're good at drawing, you're great at drawing basically, and people wanna pay you to do freelance artwork for them, that doesn't mean you have to stop what you wanna do with music. That doesn't mean you have to stop your, your side hustles or anything like that. It just means that drawing can get you a platform to make your music what you really want it to be if it's not like that off the gate. Now, if you're somebody who already knows what you love to do, you already have something lined up for you where you can just go straight into it and you don't have to do the middleman of getting jobs that you don't really care for, then go for it. Then you have nothing holding you back. That's great. A lot of us, <laughs> however, don't have that luxury necessarily. So, so we may work jobs that we're good at because we, we got degrees in this field. We don't necessarily love what we do, um, but it's not something that we plan on doing for the rest of our lives. You know, we're not confined to this one thing. It's just something that you're doing to make sure that what you have going on right now is, is covered, basically. So basically taking what you're good at is gonna be kind of like using that as a crutch or a stepping stone to, to be able to later do what you really love to do or your passion. Now, if you don't know what your passion is yet or do or what you love to do, that's okay too. So that in the meantime, whatever you're using, you know, a regular job, um, a hobby that you have, but you don't necessarily want to do it forever, that you're good at your, your niche or your niche, that's the perfect time to figure out what it is that you do want to do. Like that's the stage of my life that I'm in. I'm getting ready to graduate from college I'll be assuming <laughs> I'll be working when I graduate, but there's I don't know exactly what it is that I want to do yet. So once I have more free time on my hands after I graduate, I'll really be able to devote my free time, like my leisurely time, to trying new things. And that's really where it starts. If you don't know what you what you love, what you're passionate about, you have to try new things. And that's something that people love to say that they do. Like, oh, I've tried this, I've tried that. But have you really, because you didn't even try that sushi yet, you never know what you could be good at or what you could love, or what you could develop a passion for until you actually try it. So this year alone, I've just been trying things, just just, just trying things <laughs> to see like what's actually going to be for me because I haven't tried everything out there. So you kind of like break it down into categories of your interests. You might not know, you might love music. For instance, I love music. I don't know what it is that I want to do in entertainment and in the music industry, but I just know that I love music. So break it down into different things. Maybe try music. Okay, that was really broad. <laughs> try making music. And even that is broad itself because you can be behind the production of music with instrumentals, like making beats, producing, 
or maybe you like to write and maybe you want to write songs for people maybe you like to actually be the person who performs so there are different things that you can do that you can try excuse me um that you can see what's for you or maybe you're not the person who wants to be the artist but you want to be a different kind of creative for a music brand maybe you want to do the branding maybe you want to do promotions and product placement and things of that nature it's all about what you gear towards what you really like and you're just not going to know what that is until you put yourself out there and try either the box that everybody's in when they're comfortable. And as soon as you step out of it and become a little bit uncomfortable, you never know what, what you'll find when you explore it. And I think a lot of people use that as an excuse, like being uncomfortable as an excuse not to try new things. But it's like you can't really grow unless you experience being uncomfortable. That's exactly what change is, being uncomfortable. So if you're not okay with a little bit of change for the better and to be uncomfortable, then you can't really look at yourself and be like you're doing all that you can do to be in a better position. So for one, stop making excuses because I used to make excuses about everything all the time. All the time. All the time. And I had to realize first accept that you make excuses and you're a procrastinator. I'm talking to myself right now, but I'm also talking to you if this is you. And once you accept that, you need to work on it. That's all you can do. And then at some point, you will elevate. Trust me. Trust me. For example, this year, I bought a guitar. I was like, oh, yeah, I want to try the guitar. And I thought, let me actually invest in it. <laughs> this is kind of silly because I actually went and bought one before I even tried to use one before I ever had any experience like at all so I just was like yeah let me go get one it was less than $200 it was like one something um so it wasn't like I was breaking the bank for the whole thing but it still was an investment for me to just go out there and get something that I've never even tried before but I felt like that was going to make me more inclined to be like consistent and persistent with it but that didn't even really work out for me because consistency is also like crucial to figuring out what you like I bought the guitar for the first maybe two or three weeks I was in love with it I came home every day and played with it or attempted to I went on YouTube and I found tutorials on how to play the guitar. I could do a little finger picking medley, but um, other than that, like I, I can't play any chords. I cannot do any songs. I forgot what the letters and the orders of the strings were already because I just it's just been sitting in my room not doing anything, just lying dormant. And I mean, I guess I could say that I tried it, but I really wasn't consistent with it. So I don't know if that's something that I would end up love doing. I kind of assumed that it wasn't because I just put it away, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. It just means that I didn't put enough effort into trying to see if that was going to be for me or not. And I think that's another mistake that a lot of us make when it comes to saying like, oh, I tried that, but I didn't like it. It's like, how, how much effort did you put into actually trying that? Did you give it a month? A trial period did you give everything that you tried the same amount of time like a fair chance basically to see if you really like it or if it's really for you because maybe once you got over being frustrated and being impatient about learning something new being uncomfortable again maybe you will realize that wow I do love this this is really cool but you won't know that until you give new things to try and you actually remain consistent with it and give it a chance like a real chance which is something that I'm saying, honestly, I didn't do enough with the guitar. Um, so yeah, I'm guilty for that. But I'm saying this so that you don't have those same mistakes. And then the last thing is that if you do come across something that you like or you love or you just feel like, wow, I really like doing this, you need to give it your all when you do it. It's almost like the same thing as being consistent, but it's more so being persistent because you really, really, really want to give it, give it your all and that will really just elevate you and put you where you need to be. For example, I started this YouTube channel primarily because I was starting my lock journey. I wanted to document it. I wanted to um, be able to look back and track the progress of it. It wasn't really so much for having a channel on YouTube, although I did want a channel on YouTube for some time. I just never did it excuses so that was pretty much the reason why I started my, my um, YouTube channel was to follow my life journey but I have to admit almost three months in and 
I have not given it all the efforts that I could and should be doing if I actually want to grow my channel. So I right now I have a little over like 50 subscribers and I feel like well, I'm very appreciative of my subscribers. But I also do feel like if I actually promoted my channel, if I actually took more time out to um, invest in a new camera, invest in um, colored backdrops or just, you know, whatever. And it doesn't even have to be that much money to put into it, as I've seen in my research on YouTube. But it's like those things that I've kind of just been like, oh, you know, OK, OK, like putting it off, which I haven't done yet. And. I don't promote my channel like who has a YouTube and doesn't promote it <laughs> but I don't know it's just things that like I just kind of have been putting on the back burner what I really like to do is edit videos so I think that's the reason why I really really wanted to start my channel so that I can get better at editing but it would also be nicer to have a better visual you know when I am shooting with the camera and with the backdrop and with lighting um, and on top of that to actually have people view it because I'm promoting my brand. So again, these are things that I'm telling you that I've made mistakes doing that I don't want you to do the same thing of because, wow, am I a failure? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're not a failure if you, if, if you do the same things I do because I'm not a failure either, but it's a low, it's a learning process. You're growing, you're figuring out what's working for you, what's not working for you, how can you, how you can improve it. I cannot talk today. I'm just like stuttering. How you can um, improve this, or maybe that this is just not for you. But you need to consider all these things when you're figuring out what you want to do. And I'm going to say this. This is going to be a challenge to myself. And I suggest that if you're in a similar boat that I am in, then challenge yourself as well. So what I'm going to do is put more effort into what I am doing before I say mm, I don't like this or this isn't for me because I've actually been consistent with my YouTube channel it's kind of surprising because I'm not consistent with like anything but yeah so I've been consistent with my YouTube channel I post videos every Tuesday like every single Tuesday and I'm pretty excited about that but I do feel as though I need to invest more into my channel and I'm going to start doing that so you can hold me to it because I'm posting this today. It's Tuesday. And by next Tuesday, when I make my new upload, something about this channel has to change. It is either going to be like a new, it's going to be like an intro to my channel or a graphic or um, background change. <laughs> that's how I want it to be. It's not going to be the camera because that's not about to happen in a week. But something is going to change. So look out for that. And hold me to it. Because if you don't express to people what you're trying to do, you know, like if you're trying to do something new and exciting and you know that you're a person that tends to say you're going to do things and don't always follow through with them, tell people about what you're doing. Talk to people that are close to you, um, that you see on a regular basis, and tell them about it so they can hold you to it. So the next time they see you, they can be like, hey, so... I thought you said you were starting that YouTube channel. And then you can either be embarrassed that you're not doing what you said you were going to do, or you can be like, yeah, check it out. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to go to class now, but that's just what I want to talk to you guys about today. I hope I could shed some light in somebody's world. If you're feeling lost, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, bye guys. Happy Tuesday. Oh, and just so you know, Every day, you're one step closer to your dreams, even if you don't know what they are yet.